Hello, I'm back with the final stage of making my Tudor wardrobe, my early Tudor wardrobe. So looking at around about the time that Henry VIII came to the throne, I'm going to be making the gown. So in modern language, gown is just kind of another synonym for dress, just you know, the long, the one long garment that you wear. Whereas in the 16th century, the gown, which is worn by both men and women, is just sort of the long drapey over layer that you wear on top of your other clothes. So, my bird is peeping. So other women might just wear the smock and kirtle sort of combo that I've already got. But for a wealthier woman, you are going to be putting a gown over the top of that. So the sort of the 1510s are sort of a key time in the development of what we would think of as being the more typical Tudor silhouette, which is that sort of like very conical shape. We're seeing the tall, narrow lines of sort of more French and Burgundian inspired late medieval clothing begin to transition into that silhouette we associate with, you know, Anne Boleyn's outfit or that gorgeous portrait of Catherine Parr. So the shape is becoming conical for women with we're moving away from sort of up here to making a more wider hip area. We're exaggerating and emphasising the hips. These gowns have flattened, elongated torsos, and we're seeing an increase in surface decoration, <laughs> ornamentation, trim details, uh, lots of contrasting colours, and we're seeing the growth and the emphasis of the sleeve. So no doubt if you look up any picture of you know, women in the 1530s and 1540s, they have these huge, great big trumpet sleeves. So they, they don't quite have them in the 1510s, but the sleeve shape is starting to evolve to become that. So an older style letter medieval bodice will um, sort of, it's smooth, it's fitted around the torso, but more fashionable women are starting to wear a newer kind of bodice. So this is a bodice doesn't this, that, that, that has some flattening of the bust, but it starts to emphasise the natural form and we're seeing the lowering of a high waistline to one that more conforms to the natural waistline of a woman. The gowns have a, a stiffened bodice that's lined with canvas. Uh, corsets or stays or pairs of bodies as they were called are not a key feature of dress yet. So we're seeing shaping being done through the clothing itself and the fabric choices, sort of what's being used to make it. We're seeing uh, a waist seam, so it's not a long drape. We're seeing like a defined seam around the waist. And we're really emphasising and defining the waist by, on very, very fashionable gowns, having pleating at the back to really sort of add that emphasis to the natural waist. All of this is explained in loving detail in the Tudor Tailors of the Queen's Servants, which I've been using throughout this journey for my wardrobe and I'm using their excellent gown two pattern so if you want to make one of yourself this is this is the book to get. Okay so let's talk through some of my materials and just stroking this top one. So this is cotton wadding. I shouldn't throw it down like that. All you can see is just Bella Lugosi's eyes <laughs> over that. So cotton wadding if you do quilting of any kind you'll recognize this. Uh, this is to make the pleats at the back because they're, the fabric is not just going to be pleated, it's going to be sort of stiffened and held in place and shape with some wadding as well. It'll sort of keep the weight of it sort of in the right area as well to give it the right drape and flow. So next we've got cotton lining. So cotton as we know it, sort of as derived from the cotton plant, doesn't really, it sort of exists so there are some accounts of it, especially in places like Italy and France, but cotton, if we're talking about inventories of Tudor England at this point, uh, it just refers to a type of woolen cloth, but because wool is very expensive, um, and I was worried about the weight of it, because my kirtle and smock combined have a weight that is not uncomfortable, but I didn't want to include more layers of wool and linen to make it too heavy for me to wear because of my disability and chronic illnesses. I just, I was wary of having something that was hot and heavy that would set off my um, my migraines and my problems. So uh, a natural cotton lining for the skirt and bodice and sleeves, I do believe. Uh, hopefully, I think I got a little bit more, so hopefully I can be, start to make work on like a headdress and a bonnet as well at some point. 
Actually, it was. I think I complained in my last video that I got too much canvas lining, heavy linen canvas lining, which I have here, and I need it for this gown. So that was actually a really, <laughs> really good future sort of money saver from me getting more than I needed. So this will be used to line the bust and the bodice, sort of giving it that stiffened shape that we need to sort of show how our torsos are being elongated through an impetus of French and Spanish styles. So the next thing I needed was this gown has uh, a trim around the edges, around the bodice and contrasting sleeve colours. So what I'm using is some leftover wool from my kirtle because I had quite a bit of it left over and I thought I'm not going to buy another fabric just to have sort of half a metre or a metre of it around when I've got this and then what it looks like, well, it looks like I purposefully did it, uh, that the kirtle then has a link to the outer layer so it looks more coordinated and then just sort of looks a bit more nice. So that's my dark wool that will go around my trim. And the star of the show is my gown, main gown fabric is this very lovely satin twill. So I was kind of having back and forth over what fabric I wanted to get for the gown because I, I wanted it to be accurate, an accurate material that they would have had access to in, in 1509 and 1510. But I also had to balance out that, that I don't have a lot of money and what I could get because the um, silks are, are expensive, silk jacquards are expensive, wool is expensive. I was lucky to get that brown wool on a sale. So I was sort of going back and forth whether I even wanted to start my gown and then a fabric shop that I really like was having some Black Friday sales. So I thought, support a fabric shop that I like, get a good deal. I got six meters of this for about 25 pounds, which is very, very good deal. So I'm quite happy with that. And I was sort of, I had it, saved and I was looking at it and I was thinking is a satin really a very accurate fabric especially a satin twill but obviously a satin is a derivative of silk there are sat we have records of satin gowns existing and twill is just a sort of a weaving style and twill weaving styles have been around so I kind of I kind of in my head came up with like this justification for this fabric so I'm just like moving it about so you can see how lovely it is because it's just got a lovely shine on it and it's a gorgeous colour. So I was thinking about my hometown which has Tudor buildings in and we have um, we have a hall. I, I won't say what it's called because then you'll know where I live. Um, and it was lived in by I think the mayor of the town and the civil authority and it's just it's very grand. If you go there they have like old masters paintings and stuff which is pretty cool. And I was thinking about like oh this satin, it's not quite silk, which is very, very expensive and luxurious, but it still has a nice sheen and a quality to it. So I had it in my head that, oh, this gown will be for like the wife of a town mayor, a lord mayor, you know, so she's not quite, she's not aristocracy, she's not quite gentry, but she's still got access to a lot of money and she's got to look nice. You know, there's a dinner at the guild hall and she's like, well, I can't wear the gown I wore last year. Everything's changed since there's a new king on the throne. I'm going to get myself, I'm going to go out and commission myself a lovely new gown to make and it's going to look wonderful. Everyone's going to be super invested in our town and full of local pride. So that that's the story <laughs> behind this blue satin. I had this whole backstory in my head. Um, my one concern was is that it said it's heavy, but then I... And I got it. It's actually, it's very, it's quite thin. I think it's it's strong. It seems like a strong fabric, but I was sort of worried because there's a lot, obviously it has to have the lining and it has to have the trims and it has to have all this on it. And I was wondering whether it's going to be sort of strong enough to withhold all that. But then on the other hand, the fact that it is a thinner fabric means that when I add all the layers to it, and then I wear it on top of the kirtle, and then I wear it on top of the smock. It shouldn't be too overpowering for me to wear. It should maintain sort of a warmth, but not get too overwhelming. Because I was thinking, like, if I go to any recreation events in the summer, and 
climate change has made that the UK summer is like 35 to 40 degrees now. I can't regulate my body temperature. And I was like, hmm, do I want to be in three layers of wool in the middle of summer? And my brain went, no, you don't want that, Jess. Go for the satin twill and you're going to love it. And I, I do. I love the blue as well. Let me just hold it up so professional. It goes really nicely with this with this sort of dark purple wool. It looks has a really nice, very striking contrast. So I thought that will just look really astounding, especially with the with my purple kirtle. So that sort of cinched the deal for me, plus a really, really good price. So the next stage as I stroke my satin is uh, drafting the pattern. I ran out of my checkerboard pattern paper that has all the measurements on, so I'm going to be doing this free-handing that, which is going to be fun for me. Uh, if you want to see how I do it, whether or not it's accurate or useful for anyone else, if you check out my kirtle video, it's got a, you can see me to the tune of green sleeves, um, sketching out pattern pieces the method I use on my living room floor so next stage is pattern pieces and I will see how those hey <laughs> cat, cat in the corner hey so fabric's done drafted patterns done so now I have pattern pieces so what I have is we have a front bodice which has very wide v-neck so i'm going to try and go for a very different sort of style you see with gowns of this period that they do have a lot of variant necklines and styles which i guess is quite cool because you can see how women's individual fashions and tastes dictated sort of what they wore or regional variations within country or sort of what people wore in different areas we have a bodice back now this, this is going to be interesting, so it, obviously skirt pieces are behind, they are massive, I'm going to try and do piecing lines as suggested in the, in the making guide, which I didn't do last time, which ended up with those big front seams, so I'm going to try and avoid that because I don't want big front seams on my gown. Now, this might prove to be difficult, so this is the sleeve, now histo historically speaking, sleeves have been my undoing when it comes to anything I make for myself. So th this will be interesting. I'll try and get them better done from last time. So from what I understand, what the book suggests is that the se this seam should go at the back of the arm. So we'll, we'll, we'll find this. So this is, I've gone for a narrow sleeve. So we're not doing trumpet sleeves. We're sort of doing for something a little bit more modest. So it's going to be cut open. Cut open to here. Now what we have here is we have the optional cuff because cuffs are really big on Tudor style sleeves as well. We start to see sleeves become a really, sorry if I sound so tired, it's just a term under this so I'm exhausted. And we see sleeves being a really sort of key part of um, 16th century dress. So this is a cuff of a contrasting fabric to be added on. So with the top layer we Sort of do all this bit and then for the lining layer we add on this cuff and then you sort of flip it over and it will make the style. So all I have to do now is I have to cut top layers, linings and the interlining for the bodice next. So here I am back again with cutting finished out finished finished out um which took me about two two and a half days i got to that stage where I, I had these left to do and i was like i never want to cut a single object again why did i start this project why am i doing this which i think happens to the best of us so you can see i've got a skirt back skirt front sleeves and bodice bodice things god i hope i don't have to do any more cutting out so the next stage I have to do is this satin is looking really, really nice and I hope I haven't ruined it with pins. That would really upset me. But anyway, I can just see all the failure. 
So the next step is on these two pieces is to sew the lining or tack the lining in place and then what else do I have to do? I'll add the bit onto the sleeve lining. But I will come back, so I will do lining layer into the bodice and sew it together and then we'll see how that looks. Okay. So, update on the bodice. So as you can see, I've got it in this lovely blue satin. It's going to be a W neck closure, so it's going to be front closing along here. Um, initially, so I had it made up and it wouldn't even fit on Margaret. She's a lovely dummy, my lovely assistant. Um, and I tried it on and it was sort of like, I was like that. So, I channeled my inner thrifty Tudor lady who's been given this gown maybe and doesn't quite fit. So what I've done is I added an extra panel on the back. Uh, so it does make it a little bit, little bit big now. It does look very wide at the back. Uh, I am concerned that the skirt pieces, which they're a little, they were cut a little bit bigger anyway because I want to put pleating at the back. That I'm now concerned that they're just going to be normal size, but if they are, they are. I'm just sort of rolling with it. Um, I guess some people would say this isn't necessarily Tudor, that this sort of back seam is a bit more so sort of Georgian, so they, they have something that curves like this. But I was just thinking that if you've been handed this gown and it doesn't quite fit, you just add a back panel. You know, the Tudors were like that, they um, repurposed gowns. There's cat hair in this scene. Uh, they repurposed gowns, you know, lots of things were handed down, passed on. Most people, a lot of people who weren't in the very rich 1% had things that were second hand. So I thought, you know, just sort of paying tribute to that sort of thing. And if you were given an old gown, you'd add in something if it doesn't fit and make it fit. So the next, oh, she's come open there. Cover yourself. As well, with it being a little bit bigger, it does have to go over the woolen kirtle. So I'd rather it be a little too big and then I can cinch it in. Then it finally at the end I get to it and it's far too small and I can't fit it on over my clothes. So the next stage is uh, I'm going to be doing the sleeves. So they're going to have a turned back cuff. So I've got to put sort of... Um, I'm putting a bit of this fabric, the fa fabric I used for my kirtle on the inside of the sleeve, so it should sort of coordinate and look like a, an outfit that was designed to all go together. Um, I will come back when I've got those sleeves sort of done. Putting them into the bodice, which will be the step after that, will be fun because sleeves hate me and never work. So that will be fun. Okay, two sleeves, two sleeves for my armies. So, I'm trying to work out which way they go. Um, this one will go here, roughly. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not. So, as you can see, they're they've been cut uh, to fit in here. They have uh, a lining. Oh, as you can see, they have. Uh, a, a, a long seam down the back, they have uh, a white lining and when I get to the cuff, so it's been, there's an extra long space, so what I'm hoping for is, as you can see, this cuff will fold over and then the side will be sort of done up with a, with a hook and eye, so, oh the hook, but I could find a, a so, sort of like that, so they put on Margaret so you can see, so like that so then it'll match the uh, underlying kirtle. So the linings are just sort of pinned in place as I um, kind of don't want to sew them in place yet because I know what I'm like and I'm very bad at sewing sleeves. So what I'm probably going to do next is I'm going to sew the skirt pieces together so it's going to be a front opening skirt so there's going to be a gap here and hopefully some pleating at the back if i can get that to work 
I've never done it before, so this is probably oh, I've written other poems in the This is probably a bad time to try it for the first time, but well, you know, if you don't try something out, then you know you're just gonna regret not doing it. And if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out and I try something out else. <laughs> so skirts next. Hello, it is I. Uh, so, bullish sleeves are on, which is quite... I'm going to tell you just how huge a success this is for me because I never managed to get sleeves in right the first time. I always have to sew them and then unpick them. So that I managed to get it right the first time is quite a considerable achievement. As you can see, the sleeves are <laughs> absolutely ginormous on me, but what will happen is they'll be pinned back to expose the cuff so they'll look very good very fashionable there's a cat around me um so it'll fit like this eventually although i say this this is post christmas day and um well we're on lockdown so my my sole entertainment has been all the christmas scoff so this is how it's looking on at the moment so i'm quite happy with that so the next stage is i'm probably going to clip it a little bit more under the arms just because it feels a little bit awkward still i'm going to do some zigzag down the front not happy with how the fabric's fraying and i just want to shore it up a little bit but then the skirt will go on so the skirt will come down here and here there'll be a slit down the front and then there'll be a gap at the back so i can create Right, here's here's where we're getting on my lovely gown as modelled every to every, every time by the lovely Margaret. Let's give Margaret a hand because she's got none. Uh, so what we have is skirt attached with a lining. I just realised you can't see it, so it's got a full lining underneath before the kirtle layer. Um, this is all open, and you can see she's open down to here, a little bit, a little bit naughty, good little kirtle action there. So that'll be how it's joined up, so the fastening. Um, the belt is here, well this belt, this strip of fabric is here just for demonstration purposes so you can see where the waistline is going to be and also to hold it up slightly because at the back there's a huge gap. very conscious of her skirt. The reason why she's up on a table at the moment is because my, one of my cats tried climbing up the front of this, which I just lost. I lost it because I was like, this is pure satin. Yeah, cat claws. Anyway, you can see this bit is, is fully loose. So the original pattern calls for there to be six pleats down the back. Obviously, get you straight on Margaret, I've added this back panel which has lessened the gap considerably, which I should have planned in, in the drafting. I didn't, but we adapt, we plan, we move on, it's going to be fine. I, I'm probably just going to end up having two wadded pleats down the back because I still want the effect, but it's just I haven't got enough fabric now. The next stage will be doing the math for those box pleats to get them done and then starting the process of attaching them up. But let me go back. I'm watching that banjo. She's she's looking good. She's looking I love this this blue is so lovely, it's so soft. I mean the I know the sleeves look like obnoxiously long at the moment, I promise. I don't have sort of super stretchy Mr. Fantastic arms. It's just because of the, the cuff situation, but we're getting there, Margaret. Um, not sure how quickly I'll be able to progress on her because uh, I am, I'm back in teaching. Uh, I've been teaching back again for a, a couple of weeks before Christmas. Now I'm going back permanently, but obviously, um, <laughs> 
UK is not a great place to be a teacher right now. With our second year of pandemic looming, um, teaching is going to be very busy. And I'm not sure how much time I'm going to have for her, but hopefully, at least in the next couple of weeks, she'll she'll be done and I'll get to model her. It's so beautiful. I want to model this she was so beautiful. Okay, so it is a uh, it's been a while. Ooh, you can see my room T-shirt. Um, yes, it's been a while since I've shown you my update on my gown. As you can see, you can tell by the length of my how, how my hair is gradually growing longer and longer. So as you can see, she's got beautiful cuffs now. Look at all those hand sewn in by me, which is why they look okay from a distance. Up close, it's like. Hmm, <laughs> who did that? Uh, so this bodice is now, thanks cat. So this bodice, I'm just trying to get the satin so nice, is now fully lined all the way around, uh, which I did by hand. It took about 16, 18 hours because I'm not a very good hand sewer. <laughs> And it just took forever. I kept getting distracted and that took forever. And then once that was done, I did, as you can see, I've got binding all the way around the front and the collar all the way around the back. That took, um, in real time, about two weeks, which was actually a couple of days of dedicated sewing because I don't have the time to dedicate to it full time but it now has its binding and it looks the binding looks really really good considering uh how much trouble it gave me because again all hand sewn which I am not good at but I managed to do it and she's looking almost ready to wear so this is my day look uh the next stage if I so the next stage is putting in some box pleats. Now the original pattern for the Tudor Taylor calls for six. Um, I can't do six because of this added back panel for my uh, hog body. So what I've done is I'm doing two. So one for each side of the seam. So one here, one here to give that length and sort of additional volume to the skirt. And uh, I'm hoping it doesn't look too budge, but um, I had to account for my whole body because I'm not very good at doing patterns. So one here, one here. So I'll be rolling up tubes of wadding, sewing them into box pleats and hopefully making it look okay. This is probably all going to look fine when I'm wearing it. It's just clothing never looks quite right when it's on the mannequin. But box pleats come next. Well, actually come next is hiding this from the sun because the sun is right here. I don't allow her to see natural sunlight. But yes, box pleats will be in place the next time that you see us. Right there, Margaret. And then she'll almost be ready to wear. Okay, so <laughs> a couple of days and uh, a lot of frustration later. My, I'm so sore in my fingers from hand sewing, like, sorry. It's hide how terrible my sweatpants look. I, they're just really, really sore. So this whole back bit has been hand sewn in place with a whip stitch, which I was advised to use. And now I'm like, mm, does it look that great? I don't know, I'm probably gonna hide this with a belt. And I have my my two wadding pleats in place. You can, I can kind of see them more when I look at the footage on the camera than when I'm up close to them. So obviously, because I had to add in this bit, this whole section would have been pleats, so it would have had much more and been more impressive. But I think the two at least has some, and it has some sort of body at the back. Um, it could have been neater. I, I'm not like overly pleased with how neat my stitches are because I'm not very good at hand sewing. And I was like, yep, yeah, it'll be fine. And now I'm like, hmm, feels nice. I'm like, they are quite neat, but I'm like, hmm. Is it good enough though? So I might make, when this is all done, I might make a little belt to go around the middle so it doesn't look quite so bad. But um, 
my feet is looking good. Um, I don't want to do any more sewing today because my hands hurt and I jabbed. They just would not come through this satin, the satin, layers of this satin were just really difficult to sew through and my fingers are really, really sore from the needles and I jabbed myself in the thumb a good few more times than I really ought to have done. The next stage of this is I need to put hooks in so there'll be Thank you sleeve for being right here. So there'll be hooks and eyes on the sleeve cuffs so that they pop back properly. There'll be hooks and eyes down the front to sort of clasp things together. So I'm aware that many Tudor gowns were held together with pins. Um, I don't have any of those kind of pins. So I'm just gonna do hooks and eyes to hold it together. I just think it will look better. And then it will be hemming. Which I am also not looking forward to because I can't see it if there's like hugely uneven hem on this that I'm gonna try and fix. It'll be fine. It's just uh, <laughs> these were problems that I made for myself and went it's be fine in the future and now the future has arrived and now I have to deal with them. So that'll be That'll be the next step. And then once those bits are done, uh, she'll be almost finished. Or just about finished, other than like tidying up bits, because she still has a bit of um Oh the word is tacking and I couldn't remember it. <laughs> yeah, so she still got some bits of tacking uh, that are visible and just some tidying up some threads, making sure that there's nothing loose, and then uh She'll be done, it'll be ready. Time to put her on after three months of work. <laughs> three months of work and she's looking moderately acceptable. That sounds like a description of me. So I'm gonna go back. I've got more sewing to do today on a different project that I also started alongside this for some reason. And I'm gonna be watching Vampire Diaries and laughing because I've never seen it before and it's terrible. Good morrow, gentle fellows and gentle women. Uh, so, hemline is done. I'm not showing you it because it's very wonky, as is most of this gown, but here we go. 15, 10, 15, 11, English gown done in a lovely blue satin with dark brown lining. Um, first things first, this is ungodly hot. <laughs> as I've got my full layers on under here. Let me show you. Hang on. I've got my kirtle on underneath, I've got my chemise on underneath and then this, which is lined with thick lining and then a double lining as well and it's very very hot um, as you can see it's a little bit wonky but it's okay, I'm going to make a belt and hide that and sort of cinch it in around the middle because it does, this is a time before women had shapes so I don't really have much of a shape around the middle, I'm very rotund but no, it's like you feel the weight of it and you feel like, wow, women really, like, wearing this, you really can't do very much at all. Uh, there's still some finishing touches. If you see there on the back, I still have all my tacking in because I just haven't. I was just so willing to get it on and just see what it was like. I'm really happy with how my cuffs turned out. I think they're looking pretty. I'm just checking my reflection. I think they look pretty fabulous. Neckline could be more even, but I think it's worked out really very well. I love this blue. It looks so rich and royal. and It's very heavy. It's so heavy. But I guess you just get used to that over time. I can feel it's starting to get easier as I move around a bit. But I'm definitely ready for styling, profiling. Hey, Rick Blair! Styling! At my husband's guild meeting, I'm a middle class Berger, Berger's wife, I'm, I'm ready to look down on all the other wives and my lovely gown of blue silk. Next thing, I need to make a head covering and bonnet, because obviously they didn't go around with sloppy Sunday lazy ponytails. So, that was a very bad curse, let me try that again. No, just as wobbly. But no, so this is my 1510 English gown. I'm very proud of it. 
so thank you for joining me on this very long journey because this took about three months to do but I'm very I'm so proud of it oh that was nice it's very cool next project is my hair bonnet and then I will have the full look